Hi, welcome to another VividAquariums.com video. I'm Dave, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to inspect and dip your corals to prevent unwanted parasites from making their way into your main display tank. Here we have Acropora, Montipora, and Zoanthids to dip, but before we do that, we need to set up the dip. Here at Vivid Aquariums, we use Revive Coral Dip, and you mix it very easily, just four capfuls for one gallon of water. So we have one gallon of water here. We're going to do four capfuls into that. You want to dip the corals ideally for just about three to four minutes, not too long, and uh, get the dip mixed up using your turkey baster. Like I said, when you put the corals in the dip, you only leave them in there for about three to four minutes. And we'll start with Acroporas. Now, we're going to cut in some photos of these different parasites to show you guys an up close view of what they look like. This way, you know what you're looking for as we get these corals dipping. Uh, Acropora's have several types of parasites. They have Acropora red bugs, which is very small red spots you'll see crawling all over the branches of the coral. Now red bugs are easily treated using Interceptor, which is a dog heartworm medicine. You'll use one tablet, and just crush it up and mix it with water, and then one tablet will treat 200 gallons. You'll do the treatment for about eight hours. Now other parasites affecting Acropora's are Acropora eating flatworms, or AEFWs. These are noticed usually on the underside of the coral. You'll see little bite marks and circles around the base of the coral. And then if you dip the coral or you blow jets of water on it using the turkey baster, you'll notice these little flatworms blowing off into the water, usually about an eighth of an inch long, maybe a quarter inch long for the very big ones. Uh, flatworms, you need to make sure to use a toothbrush to scrub off any of the eggs that you see. And ideally, you'll actually cover that area where the eggs were with a little bit of super glue to prevent anything from hatching as well. Now, another parasite affecting Acropora is a gorilla crab. These are little hairy, fuzzy crabs. They'll live deep down in between the branches of the coral. If you see them in there, you'll need to use tweezers to remove them because they can irritate the coral and slow its growth over time. So, Again, when we're dipping corals, we want to blow jets of water into the, between the branches of the Acropora and around the base. And again, you're going to look at it very up close. Usually just below the surface of the water is the easiest way to inspect it. Make sure you have good light to notice these parasites. And look at the water that you're dipping them in and, and see if you see anything coming off of the coral. The next type of coral we're going to deal with is Montipora. This is a red Monty cap. We're going to go ahead and get that dipping. Montipora, the main parasite affecting that is the Montipora eating nudibranch. They're small white nudibranchs, uh, usually about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch in length. And you have to make sure to get their eggs as well. The eggs of these are hard to spot, but you'll see some in the photo here. And you'll want to use a toothbrush, again, to scrub off those eggs if you do see any around the base of the coral. And then, ideally, cover that area with a little bit of glue. And make sure, of course, any coral you notice parasites on, you want to quarantine it and don't add it to the main display. Quarantine it for at least a month or more, observing it and doing a series of dips to make sure that an egg hasn't passed through because obviously you get them going in a display tank, they can still, all these parasites can still be dealt with, but it's more of a job to deal with them in a main display. Now we're gonna go with a colony of zoanthids. Zoanthids have a very kind of interesting parasite, as annoying as they can be, the zoanthid-eating nudibranch. And they are kind of tricky because they actually will take on the coloration of the zoanth that they eat. You notice in our close-up pictures here that these zoanthid eating nudibranchs are orange in color and they're actually eating orange colored zoanthids. It makes them very hard to spot. But the best way to spot them is when you do a dip, when you receive any zoanthids, dip them and revive, blow jets of water gently between the polyps and you'll see if there are any on there, they pretty much will come off into the water column pulling around and you'll know that you need to quarantine that piece further before adding to your main tank. Now, also with zoanthids, you have uh, sundial snails, little small black and white snails that you'll see in the colony tucked between the polyps. You want to manually remove those as well as they eat zoanthids. Obviously, you don't want those in the tank. And also, uh, other parasites we're looking for are Asterina starfish. These are very small starfish, white, usually about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch long. If you do ever have an outbreak of them in a display tank, just use a harlequin shrimp. They'll take care of them and eat them. And the last thing we're looking for is planaria, which is a red flatworm. Very small again, usually about an eighth of an inch long, but uh, easy to get uh, removed with a dip and revive. So the main thing is just take your time, 
We've shown you some good pictures of what to look for. Do the dip on your corals, observe the, the water, observe your corals. If you see any of these guys, you definitely want to quarantine those corals further before you add them to the main tank. It'll make the hobby a lot more fun and enjoyable. Thanks, guys.